Um, there's a lot being said about mental health online. And a lot of people talk about what mental health is and what we can do. And a lot of people are worried about how we communicate it, what language we use around it. Should we use the word stigma? Should we use the word protection and whatever? There's an army. There's an online army of people out there. And I believe in this online army because I feel that I'm one of the online army. And you may think of an online army like this, or you may think of an online army like this, quite possibly, or an online army like this, the classic internet army, as people would say it. Actually, um, the internet army I'm talking about kind of looks like this from behind. They um, are very normal people out there doing their jobs. I'd like you all, if you're not part of this internet army, to become part of the internet army. I am now talking not to mental health professionals or people who work in the area of mental and social health, I'm talking to the people. So you can, you can, you can put your notebooks down, there's no notes to be taken. Please do tweet, get the hashtag above Arthur's Day, which I think is a very, very valid thing in Ireland. But um, what's happening online is changing, and I know you'll be hearing about that, you've heard about that last night, and you'll be hearing about that today, but what's happening is changing, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, in the middle of this change, and it's a very interesting place to be. This is, um, you probably all know this, what if we treated mental, every illness like the way we treat mental health? Um, this is one of the earliest images to be shared online about mental health and people going, look, we need to actually be talking about this. We need to be saying what's going on and, 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 and how we communicate about it. And you'll have seen images like this as well where stats are being talked about. But not many people out there to date, or before now, have been talking about how it affects real people. And that's what I'm interested in. I'm, in, I'm interested in how it affects real people. I'm interested in sharing things like that online. My I, I, you'll see what my job is in a few minutes, but every day I wake up and I look for things on the internet to make people smile. Um, because it makes people's days better. Just to see something come up on their screen that they go, oh God. Mostly it's, oh God, where did he find that? Isn't that brilliant? Isn't there a wonderful story? And that. But also, it's things like the graffiti that was up in uh, Northern Ireland over the weekend that went viral around the place. You know, positivity, it spreads, people love it. Um, a follower of mine on Twitter drew that for me. Uh, it kind of sums up a little bit of what I do. What I actually do is I look after Riverdance and the new show Heartbeat of Home online. I help with the At Ireland project I was working with worldirish.com. Um, so I was dealing with Irish people all around the world, and I've got this vast network of contacts, as we all do, all around the world in, in what I do. And I share stuff like that to them, because sometimes uh, it's international. Really interestingly, the number one question on Google, in, the number one question Googled in Ireland in 2012 was, what is love? Isn't that really interesting? I wonder if there's a lot of Hadaway fans there, or it's, <laughs> it's a sub subject that, that's, that's actually a fact. Um, I share things like this. And I share things like this, because people love this. <laughs> and then I ask questions like, does anybody else think it looks like they're, uh, they have an elephant plowing, rather than two horses and a man, from the front page of the Irish Examiner a couple of days ago. Um, I like the clever stuff that's shared online. Like, the advertisement for the Van Gogh Museum is very, very subtle, but very, very clever. I like when I see things like that. I'm also a very awkward person. I don't know what to say to people at funerals, neither do I. I'm terrible. Just say, I'm sorry for your loss and move on. I'm sorry for your loss and move on. You know, I, I tend to put my foot, I make a very good second impression personally, but there's an awful lot of people who do that online. They jump online, they have a bad reaction, and then they come off it kind of scared. And then there's always time for red pandas. Um, I help people use the internet. I help people use the internet and communicate and how they do it. And, use social media and what their tone of voice is and what way they're saying things. And it's a really interesting job, but I find it far more interesting to put that up and people go, oh yeah, I remember that. That's 1998, 1999, one of the earliest images. I must warn you, by the way, there's a few photos of, of, in this presentation of me naked, and I do have a thing for nuns, right? I have a thing for nuns like the poor nuns in the convent, in the, the poor clares in the convent in Galway who were launching their book um, and put this photo up on Facebook. Because nuns don't care what you think of them. Nuns put up photos like this, <laughs> where they're uh, creating the plans for their retirement home. The Poor Claire's Facebook page from Galway is one of the best um, <laughs> Facebook pages because nuns make you happy. 
Nuns make me happy anyway. My favorite photo of nuns are the nuns from New Mexico in Washington who had seen snow for the first time. So again, a cute photo. Um, I tweeted this out the morning that Barack Obama got elected the second time. It's President Elmo on the phone to the Pentagon. Yeah, yeah, nice. And we've seen the way things like this go viral so very quickly. Um, that was around the place. One of my favorite Halloween costumes from last year was the guy who dressed as Bray Head. You'll see the railway tracks, the condom wrapper, the bulmers, cans, uh, the rail tracks. There was also these kids in America. Again, things go around the world so quickly and just make people go, oh, that's really cute. And then I do things like this. Irish wristwatch, but if you try it, it's, it sounds very different in your head. Um, I kind of, because I'm an internet person, I kind of vary between what I do and I'm, I find it very, very difficult to stay on track. I'm going to try and stay on track for this. And really I've had to learn what the outside world is from an internet point of view rather than what the internet is from an outside point of view because I spend so much time online. So I have that printed on my desk just to remind me uh, what I'm dealing with. In 60 seconds on the internet, so much happens and we all know in our online reach out how difficult it is to get to people and get people's attention. 278,000 tweets a second is, is quite extraordinary. 20,000 photos on Tumblr. This is probably about three weeks old, this graphic, and it's probably already well out of date. Uh, we know that in Ireland, we have 60% uh, of the population is on Facebook, 27% are on Twitter, 21% are on LinkedIn. People do love talking, people do love the chats. I love photos like this though because it's the screens that really interest me. And this, you can't go anywhere. I was, in a, I was in Heartbeat of Home Open last night, and four rows in front of me, a guy was taping the bloody concert on his phone. I was so angry because I couldn't just reach down and go, please, please stop. But it's so funny, the proliferation of smartphones and the way that they're changing what we do. This is a, a diagram of how viral content spreads. So, cat on a hoover, goes to Reddit in 20 minutes, hits, and hits your mother in about two weeks. <laughs> you know? You know? You'll see it on Twitter in about an hour and a half. And, and that's how quickly information is spreading around the world now. Um, I send out photos of the bridge in Dublin that I walk across on the way in, and back from work, and people around the world who are uh, abroad kind of go, oh, thanks, I'm looking forward to being home. It's lovely to see something of home. Uh, I share photos like this. It was, a, it was, on a, it was in a... Um, a housing estate, I think in Limerick, uh, the, the, the location uh, varied. And then you'll have seen uh, things like this. I prefer this one. Uh, Twitter is, I'm eating a hashtag donut. I like donuts. Instagram, here's a vintage photo of my donut. And poor Google Plus, I'm a Google employee who eats donuts. You know, there's no love for Google Plus out there. But I, I quite like how you explain social media to people. I'm trying to get them to understand that people are going on there mostly for information and entertainment. It's a little bit of both. Um, and when I wake up in the morning, so I, I, I would check worldirish.com. Uh, I have a blog called yay.ie that I write on. I have a WordPress and a Tumblr blog. I log on to boards.ie to see what's trending there. I have a flip video that I will have taken videos on and they'll be uploading to YouTube and Vimeo during the night. Um, my phone goes everywhere with me. I upload my photos to Pixie, Flickr, and to TwitPic, which means they go to Twitter. Goes to Foursquare then, where I check in. Um, I'll add reviews on Yelp. I'll put my interviews on SoundCloud. I'll go to 9gag and Reddit to see what's trending around the world. I'll answer questions on Quora. Um, I'll check who's tagged me in embarrassing photos on Facebook. I'll check my LinkedIn for requests. That all goes to my RSS feed, which goes to my Google+. Plus. So when somebody Googles Dara Doyle, they see that Dara Doyle does all that. Problem with doing that is you end up with photos like this. Now, let me show you this photo. This is me a couple of years ago at U2 in Croke Park. It was taken by my girlfriend at the time, who said, I was videoing on one hand, tweeting at the other. She said, you weren't really at the concert. You know? It, it, it's a difficulty. It's been an addiction that I've had to get over. I'm not going out for dinner with you because going out for dinner with you is like that. And if I wanted to invite Twitter out, I'd invite them out myself. So I've been facing those problems. I am the type of guy who will take the photo first of the child. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> then I'll help him occasionally. So I'm an online community manager. And an online community manager has so many variable ideas of what it is and what it can do. I, some people think it's just a bit of Twitter. 
Some people think it's a bit of Twitter. I like to think of it like I'm composing and I'm trying to get all of the social networks in, in a line. My mother thinks of it like this. Uh, speaking of my mother, that's, that's not my mother. My mother, and, and it's interesting, and I'm talking about, remember, I'm talking about the internet and the way that people use the internet. My mother joined Facebook, right? We got her a little tablet and she joined Facebook. And on every photo that I had, she would write in small letters, no spaces, I like this. Because she thought that that was how you liked a photo. And then one morning I woke up and I discovered that Teasy Doyle had discovered the like button. <laughs> Teasy had gone through all of my photos and liked them, and does to this day. And she adds my friends, on, they're all fine with it, she adds my friends on Facebook and, they, and they're like, it's a badge of honor when your mother uh, likes one of my photos. I do get questions like this though. She does ring me and she goes, Dara, they were talking about Dougal in China on the news, will that help your job? You know, <laughs> God bless her, she's tried to reach out to me and, and to help. Um, that's basically my job, I'm very good on search engines when somebody asks me a question. And we all share this. We go to Google Earth and the first thing we do is not go to the pyramids or the Champs Elysees or the Arc de Triomphe, we'll go and look at our own house. Um, and jokes like this help. It's subtle, it's subtle. Yeah, 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 no, okay. Um, I didn't train, I didn't start out to do this. I wanted to be a Catholic priest. I trained to be a Catholic priest. Uh, I left um, after a couple of years in the seminary. I come from a very small town in, uh, Gregno, in County Kilkenny called Gregnamana, a very beautiful place. And I suppose this is a little bit of an age test for some of the younger members of the audience, just a little bit. Um, that was my first computer. These were cutting edge, or that was the software that was loaded into it. These were cutting edge graphics back in the day. Uh, and I went through, I have always been a snappy dresser, always. <laughs> Um, and if you could do that in 1997 in Kilkenny, you were an IT expert. Parts of Kilkenny you still are. Um, and the way that we've changed and how we communicate online is quite extraordinary. And the way we talk about mental health and the way that people are feeling is quite extraordinary. That's my mission in life. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? And I'm going to show you how you can do that too. Um, I do, the naked photos are coming up, I do a lot of silly stuff, like I'm involved with um, the Street Performance World Championships, the Dublin Zombie Walk, and the Where's Wally events where I share what I'm up to and people get interested and get involved in what I do. Um, I was naked, I'm there, I'm in there. <laughs> on the, on the, the docks uh, for Spencer Tunic, I was naked in the sea, never in my life have I been so cold, and never in my life have I been less worried about what anybody else thinks of my body. <laughs> Brilliant, really liberating experience, and I've worked on presidential campaigns. <laughs> so I've seen the wide gamut of the way that people communicate online and what they communicate about. And I'll do things like this, because people go, oh, that's very sweet, thanks very much. I'll do things like this. I shot this on Camden Street, right? And I saw it and I went, that's a bit unfortunate. And I was browsing Facebook in May of last year, and the Ellen DeGeneres show had somehow found the photo that I'd taken and shared it and had 39,000 people liking it, 5,000 shares. It's wonderful the way that this can be communicated around. Because I had to have a slide about cats and social media, but for the dog people, I also have a dog one, so you're fine. Um, and working with World Irish, I've been like, exposed to a lot of what the Irish do online in sharing this positivity, right? This is one of my favorite photos. It's taken in front of a John Lavery painting in a, a gallery in Glasgow or Edinburgh, one of the two, um, and it's just beautiful. I just, I just love it. I saw it online. I sent it out. People like Fiat McAneil, the director of the Abbey, and Senator Gillian Van Turnout, and other people shared it. It went very viral, um, and the mother of the child got in touch with me, which is brilliant to say thank you for sharing the photo. So it was wonderful. Michael Collins Adventures is an amazing uh, page on Facebook. There's a group of students bringing a cardboard co cutout of Michael Collins around the world and, and, and getting photos like this with him. Or this in New York where the bride and groom actually asked to be in the photo with Michael Collins. Some amazing photos of what the Irish are doing online. Do you know about the Langer Bar from Cork? Cork. The Langer Bar is a, it's a delicacy that Cork people buy in Cork and bring around the world and take photos of. Another thing of Ireland. I get this a lot, as you can imagine. 
And then one of the things I do in the mornings is there is a uh, cafe on Cable Street called Brother Hubbard. They have a tip jar war where you put more money into what, what you like. So thank God more people went for Miley from Glen Row, Bosco and Dustin. And I share these on Instagram every morning and people go, that's brilliant. I look forward to seeing them. It's a very, very simple method, but it, it works for people. Or you have UNICEF Ireland sharing um, Orla's letter to them going, I'd like to donate 50 quid to the children of Syria. Isn't that lovely? Just very recently. And people love this. People love the positivity online. And you have things like Michael T. Higgins, <laughs> knitted for the President of Ireland, sent to him. Apparently, it's in the house. You can download a pattern for it online. And we'll all remember Chris, uh, Commander Chris Hadfield, who took such amazing photos of Ireland. When we put that up on World Irish, people went, that can't be Ireland. There's not enough cloud covering it. <laughs> so an interesting one. Uh, I'm getting to the point. I don't know how much time I have left. Am I okay for time? Good. Great. Thanks. <laughs> you look good. Great. Um, I have a strong belief <laughs> that the user experience online is customer service, right? It's customer service. You have to treat, you, you have to treat people online like you treat customers. Um, I tweeted this out one Saturday morning because I saw it, and it's one of my favorite signs in the world. Not only will this kill you, it will hurt the whole time you're dying. <laughs> And I trended in the UK and in Australia and in America, as, as this went viral. I love that song. It's so simple. And every time I go to a presentation, I go, can we make it that simple to get our message across and go, this is what we can do? Because social media, people think, OK, well, we've got a great idea, and then we'll do the, 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 the Twitter and the Facebook and the LinkedIn and whatever, and then it'll be brilliant. It doesn't happen like that. Success is a very, very difficult thing. And I had the next slide. This was my uh, basic thing doing my presentation this morning. Anybody who's in the uh, creative process will know that a lot of it is, oh, sweet Jesus, why did I say yes? <laughs> that was, this part this morning was when I got an email going, you're not on till 10 past 11, it's fine. And then I got an email a few minutes later going, actually, you're on now, can you run? <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, and then the internet is brilliant for things like this. <laughs> because it's the right place at the right time the cyclist on the right, just in case you can't see it. I think about the internet like Grafton Street. Um, like I'm walking up and down, and I'm watching people go by, and we're talking, and there's musicians in the shops that I can do business with, and I can look at the guys making the clay dogs or pigs or whatever they're making now. Turtles is, is the new one, apparently, and whatever. And I treat Twitter very much the same way, in that I'll see somebody that I know, and we'll have the chats, or I'll see somebody I want to talk to, or I'll reach out to somebody, or I'll see somebody that I can help. And that's what I'm, I'm going to talk to you about. But first, I'm going to tell you about why I gave up on the internet. Right? I did. I gave up on the internet. I stopped the complete and absolute bullshit of trying to get to everybody and get my message out there as wide as possible and get everybody interested in what I do and how I do it because it never works. There's only one thing online that I have seen that does this and does that well, and it's Boo. How many of you know what Boo is? A couple of you know what Boo is? This is Boo. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the most popular dog on the internet. Boo, at the time I took this, had 500 or 6 million likes on Facebook. Um, when I took this one, uh, about two weeks later, he had 7.1 million. And he's currently up to 7.4. And people love what Boo does. And this is the stuff that people like online. Because Boo will share a photo, and within 10 minutes, it will have 138,000 people liking it, 5,855 shares, because people love fluffy things online. Well, some people do. Some people do. Sorry, Dad. Um, and Boo will uh, share photos like this. Boo's owner will, you can buy a, a plush Boo in Urban Outfitters for 32 euro. You can buy a book of photos that you'll all, you will find on Boo's Facebook page for free for 20 euro in Urban Outfitters. Boo is a little industry all of his own because Boo can do things like that. So like, <laughs> don't try and be Boo is basically what I'm saying. OK, so here's, I'm getting to the point. There are 10 things that I believe you can do. There's a lot of them you can do from this room. At the very end, we're all going to do one of them together. Um, and I'd like you to join the online army of writers and confessors and bloggers and tweeters and posters and Instagrammers and cartoonists and comic book people and film people who are all making things about mental health and saying to people, you are not alone. You are not alone. And this is the biggest thing. This is why I love the internet. 
First one I'm going to tell you is tell your story. Many, um, it, it reads, it's really difficult to be a human. Like, have you ever done something awkward and then thought about it for eight years? <laughs> We're sharing stuff online. People are sharing stuff in different ways and different mediums. Um, there's a lot of cartoons out there at the moment, a lot of cartoonists making stuff about mental health, making stuff about depression. That is reaching out to people and going, I'm suffering from this too. I have this voice, I have this creativity, and I can use it. Some of them are, are really, really beautiful. Tom Murphy was, uh, is a friend of mine, was my boss. Many of you may have seen him. He put this article on the journal.ie uh, a few months ago, and basically the thrust of it is, I go to a physical trainer to um, exercise my body, so that's why I go to a counselor, to exercise my mind. And having read that, and knowing Tom, and I've read a lot of stuff on boards.ie, I went to a counselor. I started counseling recently. It's one of the best things that I have ever done. Um, and I, I think it's extraordinary that there's people like this. Even this week, there's somebody talking about living with ADHD up on the journal.ie. Um, a girl called Roisin got in touch and asked me if I would share her uh, blog about uh, being 19 and being diagnosed with cancer. Um, and so there's a lot of people out there that are talking about the things that are happening with them and letting people know that they're not alone. Sharing advice is something similar. Sharing advice, you can do it in a variety of ways. I can show you thousands of websites where you can have the opportunity. Um, this is Suicide Watch on Reddit, one of the most popular uh, sites in the world, where people post and go, I'm making an exit bag, I'm leaving Monday. People are actually suicidal and posting online and saying, I need help, and people are getting comments. It's, it's a further diagnosis than going to your GP or writing to the newspapers or whatever. This happens online. Even in Ireland, we have boards.ie. Boards.ie has two, three, four actually, four amazing forums that I love. This is personal issues where people post about dandruff that won't go away or people say I'm negative or I'm in self-destruct mo mode or I'm lacking female friends. People go in, post anonymously. Other board members come to them and give them advice always very positive. Um, the relationship issues is another scary one. What can I do to save my relationship? Depression is ruining our relationship. Dog in the bed. A guy uh, met a girl on a blind date, uh, went home and she had a dog in the bedroom. That, that's what that's about. I had to click into it just to, to see <laughs> what it was about. But, but like some of the advisors are extraordinary and what they're sharing online is just brilliant. And then there's people like this who will put stuff up on sites like Reddit and Imgur and Ninegag and go, do you know what, it's OK to ask me about mental health problems, because the worst thing you can do is not ask me, because then I don't get the opportunity to talk to you about it. Ask the question is the third thing that I'm, I, I'm going to say to you. If you have something going on, I'm going to contradict myself in this presentation, but if you have something going on or you need help with something, ask people. I put this on my Facebook um, a while ago. Previously, I'd put up that I'm looking for a counselor. Can anybody recommend somebody? And somebody did. Um, I put up um, that I'm really, really sick of the chronic fatigue syndrome I have. I'm really sick of having fibromyalgia. I live with it daily. I've lived with it since 2008, 2009. It is ruining my life. And I have to get to a stage where, people, where I'm getting advice from people of what can I actually do? So these are my friends on Facebook. I'm lucky to have a wide thing. But nobody's going, oh, Jesus, I can't believe you put that up there. People are actually supportive and people want to help. So asking the question is, is a really good thing because like one of, the simple thing, one of the simple tweets I sent out this morning was, how are you today? Because sometimes people don't have people to talk to. Sometimes I'll get up and I'll go to the office and between let's say the seven and the 12, I will not have talked to a single person. I'll have communicated online, but I won't have talked. So it's, it's important to reach out to people and let them know that you're there. Offer to help someone is very self-explanatory. Um, you'll find, you've, I, I don't have a slide for that because it is that, but you'll find so many people on Twitter and Facebook talking about issues that they have, and your opportunity is to reach out to them going, yeah, I understand that, I have that issue too. Give people a shout out. Everybody loves when they're mentioned on Twitter. Use your Twitter and go, I love what Reach Out Ireland do. I love what Spun Out do. I love what um, Pieta House do. I love what... Aware does, I love what all of the charities that make a difference in Ireland and around the world do. 
and it's lovely to be able to go, hi, how are you? Because we forget to do that. And then people don't know that there's other people out there listening. I, I talk to people all the time about Twitter mostly, and they go, oh, I put tweets out there, but nobody responds. That's kind of a lonely thing sometimes. So I think we all have the opportunity to give people a shout out, because we're not as powerless as we might think. Poor dog, poor dog, silly dog. <laughs> say well done to people as well. Right? Say well done and say, well, well done on the presentation, well done on the conference, well done on getting people together, well done on coming. Well done on getting up in the morning. Um, this is a slide, I, if I can read it, it's got, you got out of bed, you got dressed, you got out the front door. They may seem like small things, but when you are lower depressed or at war with your mind, these small things are achievements. So I'm just telling you, well done. When I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue, um, the best piece of advice that I got was, when you get up in the morning and you cannot get out of bed for the life of you and you don't want to do anything, even if you have to crawl, go take a shower. If you don't have to crawl to the shower, go take a shower. And then if you have to crawl back to bed, go and do that. And there are mornings that I have to do that. There are mornings I cannot literally get out of bed. I cannot be online. Uh, my body won't let me. But everything is an achievement, and everybody, everybody likes to be told, well done. Here's the, um, here's the contradictory bit, right? Don't put it out there. When you're in a bad mood, when you're in a bad mood now, don't go online and share your bad mood. Nobody gives a fuck, guys. I'm really sorry. But like, you've seen how popular a boo is. Be more of a boo than, oh my God, this is terrible, I'm having a terrible day, and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna contradict myself in a minute. This is my, kind of my job. This is how I see my job. <laughs> That's how it feels, dealing with people on the internet sometimes. But you have to be positive, be nice to people. Just don't let people be in a bad mood. You'll know, if any of you follow me on Twitter, you'll know when I'm tweeting photos like this. Um, how did you hear about the YMCA? It's, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's on. Uh, photos like the Dublin team uh, visiting the hospital during the week. You know I'm probably in a bad mood because what I'm doing is I'm sharing these pictures to make me feel better because I found them online. I love that one. Um, it's weird, but <laughs> I love it. So here's the contradictory bit, put it out there. Because if you've got a problem, if you've got, if you are feeling depressed, if you are feeling low, if you want to reach out to somebody, do reach out and say hello to people. Because we are in this situation. Not many people go, how are things going with your depression? Are, are the meds treating you well? Have you had to give up stuff? How's your energy levels? What does it feel like? It can be a very difficult and isolating thing. And sometimes you just don't know what to say. Uh, we all suffer from that but we can do that. <sighs> That's one way to deal with my depression sometimes. <laughs> um, I, 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 the motivational things that you can find online sometimes can be quite extraordinary, but then there's also the campaigns. So um, suicide is the second biggest killer of college students in the States. So there's a campaign recently put out uh, where they put the backpacks of suicide victims around, told the story of people who had done it, and gave where you can go to help. I love that. Keep asking and searching, because somebody will answer you. You will find it. When I was a kid, there was no such thing as Google. I couldn't go on the internet and find, does anybody else feel like this? What does this mean? Why am I doing this? What, what's wrong with me? And all that kind of stuff. Now we can, but it's up to this army of people who are putting stuff like this up there to populate it with that content and get it out there. Um, these are a series of posters by a gentleman called Patrick Smith, where he has visualized what different um, ailments are like. They're very simple, but they're a lovely way of communicating what it's like to be about. That's gender identity disorder, anorexia, uh, depression. Another one that I found really striking was um, Toby Allen, who has started uh, cartooning uh, different ailments, anxiety, borderline personality disorder, paranoia. He's giving them characters so that children will be able to know what's wrong with mommy or daddy, how it affects them, why it affects them, what's going on there in language that they can understand. This is hugely powerful stuff. And then there's cartoons like this, which basically talk about uh, the struggles with anxiety. 
Um, I found this um, online this morning, a lovely letter that a girl keeps uh, sellotaped to the front of her folder. She wrote it and says, yeah, sometimes I feel crap, but here's what I do about it. And she decides to share that online with people. It may not be the most beautiful thing in the world, but it's a lovely thing for her to share. <sighs> like I do, share something funny, because God, the world is depressing enough. Um, on a grey morning like this, when you put something like that out, people go, oh my God, that's the cutest thing in the world. When you see something like that, take a photo and go, okay, that's very clever. Like, you got, the cuteness is there, the inspiring is there, and there's older photos of that child where they're, they're, they're mapping his thing. Um, that's Mount Rushmore on its side. I like looking at the ordinary in an extraordinary way, and then I love things like this. <laughs> Because it works. And then my final challenge to you is to make someone's day better in any way you can. It's the saying well done. It's the asking how you are. It's putting something up online. It's kind of sharing a little bit about yourself. There is a site called Daily Odd Compliment. If you want to know how to compliment somebody, go to Daily Odd Compliment and it will tell you things like this. Um, I don't really have a favorite color. It's pretty much just what you were wearing that day. Oh. You know when you wake up on a cold morning, you're like, oh, hell no, I'm not ready for this. That's how I feel when you say goodbye. My favorite one, though, um, I'll cycle through these, um, is this one. If there comes a time when one can marry food, I'll still propose to you. <laughs> what an odd compliment, but what a lovely one to share. Um, there's a brilliant tweeters out there. I just love that. I sometimes go, God, you're looking well on Twitter. You know, and people go, oh, Jesus, thanks very much. Because they're entering into the conversation as if, you know, I'm talking to them. And, and this sort of stuff matters. I shared a, a pandy yesterday. Right, I'll show you, I'll actually, I'm going to show you the other side of that, of what I shared. No, I'm not. Sorry. God, I built it up there and everything. Let's see if I have it on the next screen. Um, there's also this thing online where you go, oh my, Dav and I used to work together in boards.ie, right? And we're, in, we're internet people, and sometimes people would come in and go, oh my God, there's an amazing video. You have to see it on YouTube. It's a cat playing a keyboard. And we would roll our eyes at each other because it's like five or six years old. But there's people out there who haven't seen stuff. So just because you've seen something somewhere and you go, oh, well, Dara Doyle put that up. I can't put that up. Share it. That's what it's for. This comic from XKCD is basically going, I'm going to show you what happens when you put Mentos in Diet Coke, because maybe you don't know. You know, there's always someone out there who may not have seen what you're going to share and may be interested in it. Um, and quotes. I mean, God, we're all sick of our aunties and our uncles sending us quotes by email or seeing all endless positivity, but sometimes they can help. Uh, and sometimes it's okay to go that things have changed in society, and the way we look at people is different, and the way that we shouldn't judge somebody by the shape that they are or how they do it. Sometimes you can go, God, you're looking well, I love your clothes, I love how you look, because you know in yourself what it's like to be complimented. You know what you like to hear. Sometimes say it to other people. Um, that's on the back of one of my business cards. <laughs> I quite like it. There's so much stuff like this out there, guys. Just go find it, Google funny pictures, start sharing, and make somebody's day a bit brighter. Because you can be like this. You can actually make a difference. You can join that army. And by putting up the content of going, I had this problem, here's how I got over it, I had this opportunity, here's how I got over it, here's where you can find help. Here's a shout out for a charity that deals with this, here's a shout out for an organization that deals with this, here's a shout out for somebody who can help you with this problem, you can make things happen. Uh, I am Dara Doyle, I've got a blue nose. The blue nose, do you know why I have a blue nose? I'll tell you very quickly, it's because people go, why do you have a blue nose? And it starts a conversation. Thank you very much, folks.